What's up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Chromecast. My name's Joe. I'm joined here today by Robbie. What's up? And Gabriel. Hello. And Andy Cam. Hey, guys. And yeah. Paul. And Dan. What else can we name? I don't know. That's it. Have you named your clubs? Yeah, we should name our golf clubs back You've there. Had a while. Are they My in your clubs? shot, Andy? Can should you be called the PXGs? Can we see the golf clubs yeah. in your shot? Yeah, there we go. There's the golf clubs. I uh, Robbie's Robbie's done what he does. You know, he <coughs> he uh, he he does research. He finds the best things out there, and then he just tells people about them. He, he didn't he didn't necessarily say you guys need to buy these clubs, but he's just like, man, these new clubs. I he's like, hey, just swing really them once. These. Hey, just swing them. Just, just swing them. Just, just see how they feel. Yeah. To see how they feel. I'm not giving them to you. No, right, right. mine. And then I, I, of course, hit a couple golf balls with them, and I'm, I'm hooked. I uh, need, to, I need some new the irons. The ones that came back. No, the, no, I did no. swing the eight iron just to check it. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, they're good. Okay. Nice. They're too light now. So what are you swinging? The PXGs. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, the PXGs are dope, and the price is just hard yeah. to beat. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah. Stay tuned for some more golf content. I can't, I can't decide coming if, soon. We got to name my golf clubs. I'm gonna say Cletus. Cletus. Cletus, the golf clubs. <laughs> that's all right. Yeah, that's we, <laughs> Cletus. Any horse is Cletus in our house. Cletus, the golf okay, clubs. that's fine. If you want to Cletus clubs, yeah, yeah, Cletus clubs. Robbie's thing is when we play our morning round. Anytime somebody's on a chip <laughs> streak, he comes up with a new variation of chip. <laughs> hey, <laughs> chips ahoy! Or yeah, what, what was it? Chip suey. Chip suey. Chip suey. Yeah. I like that. Uh, I sir like chips that. a lot. Yeah, so chips lots of good. We, we uh, chippy chipperson. We're trying to figure out a way. Chip we're tr- face. We're, we obviously, we obviously <laughs> are super into golf, and it is uh, something that that at least us four here at at Chrome on, Chrome on Box really enjoy. Uh, fun part, fun fun fact: Andrew did not play golf at all. Yeah, we've got him. We've got him hooked. He's hooked. Is it, wait, where's your he Where's had, your golf shirt? You've been, in, you've been rocking the golf shirt. How to get the the simulator turned on? Oh yeah, he's so I was like, oh, there. I see what's happening. It's gonna you're be. Gonna, you're gonna it, be showing up on Saturday. Next Next thing, we're gonna see him come in on the camera on Saturday. Yep. yep. That was my plan for this weekend. Dude, actually, I it's it's amazing that we have this this resource. So we we need to use it for sure. Um, but yeah, we've we've talked about trying to do some just casual fun youtube type content around golf um because if we if we're not careful we'll set and golf will just leak into you know our our main content so yeah we don't want to do that so we, we gotta we gotta we gotta yeah, let we chrome gotta box re- be about chrome books. relieve the pressure <laughs> yeah we want to we, we, we want to pursue our passions and in, in, yeah in like under the same thing but in different lanes like, yeah you know exactly. I'm, I'm doing my smoker thing yep robbie's i mean we all kind of have our golf thing but yeah. robbie robbie obviously is the he's the aficionado yeah and i love i love disc golf stuff but there's just not as much you know of a market for yeah for disc golf stuff I, there there are a lot of folks that that are interested in that yeah but that like sport, you were saying yesterday when we were across the street for you it i mean it's I don't know. It's different depending on what it is. You can take something you're passionate about it, and and like what we've done with Chrome West, we've built something off of that. Yeah. But it's if you really just enjoy the game of disc golf and you don't want what we do here to kind of bleed yeah. into that, because right. that's that's we eat, sleep, breathe that stuff. You know, uh, videos think, and all that stuff here. I just, think what it I think what it is is like the the. <clears throat> my my disc golf journey i'm i'm competitive enough that if i let myself i can i can really go down that rabbit hole of, oh, of yeah. wanting to be more competitive and thinking about right. what it might look like to play more time and do this and do that yeah. and it's like if i'm not careful i could do that whereas with golf i'm ne- I'm, ne- I'm never going right. to be on tour playing yeah, well, I don't, well, I don't actually, so actually, it is purely fun for me you weren't right. here yet this morning robbie and i have decided we're going to go join the what's it called uh, live the live, live tour L-I-B. because I'm in. Some of those guys. There I'll was a 15, last. there was a fifteen year old, yeah fifteen year old tied with Phil Mickelson today. Didn't even know there were which, that, which by the way that that he wasn't shooting great. But well, it was also last <clears throat> month's tournament. After we watched it for yeah, we I watched like an hour forty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I went to YouTube because I was like, oh, I bet you they they started already because I think you they were watching. Start, <laughs> they started the London one early because for them that was one o'clock in the afternoon. Right. So I was like, I wonder. And so it it looked like the official live golf channel and so i'm you know we're watching it and i'm like yeah, it's really cloudy right. there uh and then gabe overheard somebody say i grew up like 20 miles from here yeah. or whatever and, and the guy was clearly was, english yeah and it was like wait, wait, wait a second. so i started looking because i was like this this youtube channel looks weird because i went to the liv golf like official channel wasn't on there and i'm yeah. like 
Yeah. That's weird that they would spin up a channel. Yeah, somebody was just re-airing uh, uh, the, yeah. the last month's thing. They got that view. But they put <laughs> right. the, the thumbnail and everything was like Portland, wow. all this yeah. stuff. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, man. They they're gonna suckered have to, they're you. Gonna kudos, yeah, kudos, yeah. kudos to this guy because he the channel was started less than a month ago. It's the only video on the channel. There were 4,600 people watching Real it time. when we nice. were on there. And they named it. Because it's live. He put it on there but live. But they too. named it Live Golf portland which oh, is what gosh. everyone searches so this guy yeah. played the algorithm because oh, yeah. he knew what people oh, were yeah. researching and you know he pr- he's not gonna make anything but, yeah, i was gonna say he's but, not monetized but yeah whatever but that that one video alone may he give probably had some enough probably had some links down in the yeah. description trying to spam some people or something but anyway <laughs> we, we decided yeah. that we could probably hang with the worst golfers on the live tour because oh my god they have I don't know PGA, about that. <laughs> well I don't know. pga tournament there's there's like twice as many golfers in the live oh i think yeah uh it's it's half no it's a third <coughs> a half. the field's a third usually the fields for pga are 140 to 160 that's right it's the there's other way 54 around. but 60 golfers yeah you got to finish what top 15 you gotta top? be in top 50 to, to yeah. make anything any in the PGA. little bit of money Bottom guy in lives making one hundred and forty thousand dollars. <laughs> so Robbie and I already go. go. We're gonna go play two tournaments a year, and yeah, there you go. Yeah, call Sign your me up. Back. Tell I'm, her, that, tell I'm, her she can I'm in. Back. I'm <laughs> in. So yeah, stay tuned. We're gonna figure out. So we're gonna figure out a way to make some golf content. I don't know. Yeah. I don't not, know. Not on. Not on these channels. Yeah. No, no. Not on. Not. Not on. Uh, Chrome and boxed branded stuff. Whole but, new thing. We'll but a whole new thing. We're, we're gonna figure it out one way or another. But it's gotta uh, start. It's gotta start small. Yeah, yeah, it's got to be, be fun, easy content to make. Like we, we're not gonna do anything super <laughs> overproduced or anything. Yeah, and I don't want to ruin the enjoyment of playing golf. Exactly. I right. Don't I want it to into a huge job. Continue thing. to be fun, but if we can figure out a way to, you know, have some content around it, and we just get to go play golf, but make right. content at the same time. That's, that's my job. You know, yeah, I mean, I, that sounds yeah. pretty good to me. Yeah. I mean, we've already got Andy Cam hooked, so we, we, it's no, we got, we got our, we got our videographer hooked yeah. on yeah. golf, so that's good. What do we need, Andrew? How many cameras do we need? We'll, we we'll, just need some we'll swap. And we'll, stuff. Andy, we'll, Andy, and I can swap phones, back baby. and forth. Yeah, we so can need, film a lot of it on our stuff phones. On your phones, it's, it's, yeah. the go, it's the good, good method. Yep. Yeah. We're yes. gonna we're gonna start start simple. Everybody do little vlogs there, and yeah. then I and just then come back slap with it together. The real we'll, camera. We'll get some just extra get some, some extra yeah. pixels and mount them. We'll get yeah. some six A's and mount them on the carts. That way we've there always we go. got like the cart cam and everything. Exactly. It'll be good to go. I, I love mean, it. I, I think what we have, together. Here, last last thing I'll say. What we have to do to start it is we'll just go play a local <clears> round. We'll just go to Lincoln Trail. We'll yeah. go to Heartland. Whatever. And just, just try it. Just just try to film it. See what happens. How's your shoulder? If it's not great, maybe tomorrow. Let's shoot for that's next what, week, maybe. Yeah, that's what Joe said the other day. He's like, <laughs> yeah, maybe tomorrow. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm ready. Maybe tomorrow morning. I'm like, uh, tomorrow morning? Really? Swinging, okay. <laughs> swinging in here is is uh, you know perfect lie and right. and uh-huh. swinging on something that isn't going to give any impact. And I'm afraid that if we tried to go play, I would hurt it. Yeah, that'd be yeah. good. We'll just carry yeah, the extra soon. fiber build around with we'll you. Do head off right. of it. Head off of that. Drop, it. That's a brilliant drop it out there. Idea. That's yeah. a good idea. It's not a bad idea. Okay, a uh, couple things. <laughs> we, we did it. We, we did what we said we weren't going to do. Not going to do it. Uh, welcome to the Chromecast. Couple, yeah, <laughs> welcome. Welcome. Thanks for thanks for joining us. A um, couple quick things. Make, make sure to go down there and subscribe if you're yes. watching this on YouTube. If you're listening, we have a YouTube channel and yep. we have a awesome video component to this podcast and andy cam does a great job of editing this together and adding in some fun easter eggs and some different little graphics and animations yeah because fun stuff if you're not watching you will never know who paul and dan are because we're not going to tell you right you just have to watch you have to go watch the video to know uh we've already told them that cletus is the golf clubs but Yeah. yeah paul and dan uh great uh great um um you know office mates yeah, conversationalists yeah. Oh, yeah. they are yeah, right. uh, yeah. yeah. Gr- great <laughs> dan's pretty happy looking dan's a happy Maybe, dude he almost looks concerned dan is concerned like dan's happy yeah he's he's a happy guy i think it's a smile we can't tell um but yeah definitely go check out the youtube channel and make to make sure to subscribe as we get a little closer to 10,000 subs, we are going to do a really cool giveaway. We might go ahead and start the giveaway here soon, honestly, and just yeah, let it run gonna, until, we hit, time. until we hit 10K. But uh, if you if you go ahead and subscribe now, once we launch that giveaway, you'll still be able to get entered to win. You'll just you'll just click into the Gleam link and just say, yeah, I'm already subscribed. Yeah. Um, so definitely do that. 
And then one other thing you should go check out, uh, if, especially if you are an educator or if you work for a school district, if you're an IT admin for a school district, <clears throat> we just launched our biggest giveaway yet in partnership with yeah. Logitech, and we are giving away 30 Chrome Packs. Yeah. These backpacks come with literally everything uh, you need for the classroom. Well, it's a sweet backpack to begin with. And it's a sweet yeah, Herschel backpack. backpack. Cool. Yeah, Herschel. So I got to pull it up here so is I don't it forget. Live? Did, is it live now? As they're listening to this, it'll be live. Yeah, Because yeah. it's launching yeah. tomorrow so it morning as we're recording this Thursday. Awesome. Uh, so we are giving away a bunch of awesome <clears throat> Logitech uh, <clears throat> gear that you can use to really just outfit the entire classroom. So uh, we've got a, a headset in here. We've got the K580 wireless keyboard, the M355 mouse, a um, HD webcam, a blue snowball ice USB microphone, the nice little yeah. uh, nice little microphone. So you use that to create some content and do some cool uh, podcasting. Yep. Kids are figuring this stuff out. Uh, and a Logi pen if the classroom has USI yep. uh, Chromebooks. So if you are uh, if you're an educator or like I said, I think uh, let me read it here so I make sure uh, that I say this correctly. Uh, so, so this is only open obviously to to educators and folks uh, in the uh, edu space. Um, the official official kind of uh, uh, terms and conditions here is it is open to all currently employed K through 12 school or district level faculty, IT staff, and leadership. So if you're not an educator and just listening to this, you just like Chromebooks, <clears throat> you probably have that that one teacher that you remember sure. that you, you may be still friends with on Facebook. Or you have your kids that have a teacher. Or yep, that like, one yeah, yeah that one teacher that educators. you know goes above and beyond that is, I mean, they're, they're obviously, as Chromebooks have, have gotten more and more, um, you know, into the classroom, they, the, you know, the, the, the IT admins are really figuring this stuff out and, and, they're, but they're still those teachers. Like, you know, the ones that are just the little, the techie, the more techie yeah. teacher that's the one that always gets asked all the questions and trying to right. figure out how to do mm -hmm. this or how to do that. This is a great giveaway for them, Absolutely. for that person. Yeah. Uh, or just anybody uh, that uh, that might need something like this for the classroom to really kind of enhance the Chromebook experience. As we were talking with Logitech about this partnership and how we wanted to roll this out and what we wanted to give away, you know, they're all about, you know, obviously the Chromebook's the hub and, and it's amazing that so many schools are now even getting one to one. And then what can we now do to take that Chromebook experience kind of to the next level, right? right? And this this giveaway and, and these Chrome packs are doing just that. So mm -hmm. huge shout out to Logitech. This is, uh, yeah, I mean, from a, from a monetary value, from a number of things we're giving away yeah. standpoint, this is by far the biggest giveaway we've ever done. Yeah, so. and, and just to clarify, you know, it's uh, the, there'll be one winner, and yes. that winner gets yeah. 30. all 30 of them. Yep. Um, yeah, so, so they're looking, looking to equip a classroom or a yeah. lab or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Just, yeah good, it's going to be awesome. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see, like, once it's done, Can't wait. once it's given away, hopefully we'll get photos. some photos back. Oh, like, my gosh. Because yeah. yeah. that's yeah. the cool, cool thing. This isn't just like, oh, this is great for helping the kids learn math and stuff like that. You're talking about a backpack that has enough stuff in it that you know this can if if a teacher an it admin or a teacher who does tech or whatever wanted to focus in on hey you want to be a digital creator yeah. here you we go. got everything in this bag you need to start right. to create you know yeah. you, you want to do this or whatever this is this is all the tools you need to go along with a chromebook to touch on every facet of yeah. the digital age it's really yeah. cool so yeah and it's, it's been really fun um uh kind of working through this process <clears throat> with logitech and learning more about you know how they've invested in in the edu space and yep. and you know really creating all of these works with chromebook certified peripherals that you know if a if a if a, a student or if if the teacher or the it admins looking for something and they're like I just don't even know. We just need keyboards. We need to make sure that they work. Well, cool. These have a works with Chromebook certification right there on the on the well, box, and we know that it's going to work. And putting this together, I didn't I didn't realize the number of yeah. works with Chromebook 50 items. Plus. Yeah, fifty over fifty now. Yeah, uh, it's, from Logitech. I'm like, it's wow, crazy because yeah, I was actually looking there. There's a little hidden. Uh, page on the chromium repository uh, that had the works with chromebook list and yeah. it was it was relatively short a lot of it was uh the styluses that are out and then h mostly hp printers well yeah. google has migrated that to uh i think it's a uh, not sites um S google slides it's like oh, okay, a slides yeah. url the list is like 12 pages yeah, long now you have amazing. so it's many crazy. styluses 
Uh, every HP printer you can think of is on there. Yeah. Microphones, game controllers. There's so many things, yeah. and Logitech is right there at the front of all of yeah. that. They are just they're yeah. leading. The yeah, they were. I mean, they were one of the first kind of. I think they've <coughs> in some of the write up, you know, a pioneer partner with with all of this, oh, yeah. and they were they were definitely right there from the get go on this certification and this uh, making sure that you know testing their stuff, really making sure that all of their peripherals were working with with Chromebooks. Yeah, and, and the cool thing that uh, we're also doing, we're launching a, a three-part podcast series mm-hmm. and uh, with Logitech uh, for, the, for, the, for this giveaway and for this campaign. And we've we've we chatted with uh, some folks at Google, really talking about the ins and outs of the Worst of Chromebook certification, how it works, and why they decided to do this, mm-hmm. and you know, really really got into the details of that. And then we talked with um, um, talked to somebody from Logitech, talking about the Logi Pen and the design yeah. that went into that, yeah. and then also kind of some of their other lineup and how they're thinking about that works with Chromebook certification and Chromebooks and EDU stuff. Uh, and then we finish up with a, I, well, I don't remember the order, Andy Cam. I've, I think the Fried Tech one was last. I can't remember. Anywho, we had a, a chat with uh, Fried Tech who uh, they offer, you know, um, uh, consulting and stuff for schools who are trying to maybe roll out, oh, um, yeah. um, you know, some, you know, a full, full one-to-one program or whatever. And had a really fun chat there too. So all sorts of good content going out. Make sure to definitely subscribe so that you can see all of that. Okay, digging in to some news from the week. Finally, stuff, stiff. Uh, 8CX. You uh, somebody dug up. I don't know if it was you or not. Who dug it up? Yes. Rep- rep- repositories. Uh, in their digging around, found some goodies about the yeah. Snapdragon 8CX. It's one of those things I check. I don't know, every few days or something, uh, because it's been since March, I think, that we uncovered the the fact that the 8CX, so back up a little bit, uh, Snapdragon has a couple compute platforms, so they've got the 7C and then the 8C. 7C, obviously, is less powerful. It's the one we've seen in devices uh, like the HP Chromebook 11, uh, X211, um, and then the the Gen 2 of that is what's in, like, the Duet 3, Duet 5, Uh, a little bit more capable uh, chip, and then they've officially announced the 7C Plus Gen 3. I don't understand. Max plus. X. Yeah, I'm like, Pro. <laughs> what is it's this? It's a Gen 3. Yeah. That's it. Like, that's the next step. Why is it Plus? I could see Gen 3, and then they do a 7C Plus Gen 3. Maybe they, maybe they just skipped it. Maybe they're like, you know what? This is a good The Gen now. 3 was We're no bueno. Let's it. Plus it. Yeah. There you go. Um, whatever. Let's uh-huh. bump it up. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> they announced that, um, I don't know, it's a few months back. Yeah, it's been a bit that they were going to officially bring that to Chromebooks. Um, so we've had those chips. But I've always thought, I mean, I remember since we first kind of put two and two together that the 7C was going to show up on a Chromebook because we thought, like, the original Snapdragon stuff was like the 848. Yeah. Is that right? Uh, it's 848. Eight, what is it? 845. 45. There you go. Yeah, because yeah. well, they went to 850. I don't know. I've, I've, I've forgotten. 888, 87. <laughs> It's niner triple eight <clears throat> yeah um and so we the original snapdragon on a chromebook i remember i was on a cruise and got a, a message from gabe that finally in the repositories this is back in like 2018 um that there was a hint of a snapdragon yeah. chromebook like, oh my gosh it's gonna happen and it just took <clears throat> drug on forever nothing happened and then once the they announced the they were going to make a compute platform at, in their December thing. I remember watching it. We were in that front office. It was our first year, it was 2019. We were sitting there watching it. It was they said Aloha like 87 times. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, and we got actually to the end of it. 87 yeah, times. Yeah. Yes. And they got they kept saying all, all this stuff about always on, always connected laptops. And we we're like, surely they're going to say, and this is what we're going to do for Chromebooks because it just everything they were saying made sense for Chromebooks. Yeah. And then they didn't say anything about Chromebooks. No. Um, but we and put it was like. Two hours long. Yeah. Oh, we yeah. put we yeah, put some was... things together and figured out, okay, this thing that we've been seeing, this 7180, SC7180, I finally found something that tied that name to the 7C. Yeah. And made a clear enough case that it's like, yeah, that's what this is. That's what it ended up being. It, it worked out. Um, it's been murky ever since because yeah. the SC7280 has been in the works. There's even a, a fork off of that. But the devices that have come out as Gen 2 Snapdragon are still under the uh, development board 7180, which is the Gen 1. But clearly, these are Gen 2 devices. They're faster. They have different cores in them. It's 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 
cut and dry. They are different. Um, so maybe the 7280 is like the modification of the platform or whatever. And so it just, it's been a little confusing and it's not quite as clear cut as the Intel stuff. So all, so rewinding all that stuff back, I remember at that time thinking, why wouldn't they just make the eight CX as well? Like, let's go ahead and make a Chromebook with that, that thing. Cause it yeah. was basically the Snapdragon 888. They just announced it. And then the eight CX was this new, uh, eight level computing platform. Yeah. And no news came from it. And then in March of this year, I was looking for something else and came across something that led me to something else and then found a commit for SC8180X. And I was like, well, that sounds pretty clear and cut, yeah. you know, straightforward. <clears throat> you start looking at the comparisons between the 7180 and the 8180, 7C, 8C. It's got an X on the end of it. Those are internal names that that they use in the repositories for these chips. It's not um, they they don't use them too widely, but it's quite clear that's what it is. So that showed up. They're like, "Hey, we want to make the platform. We're going to start working on it." Silence. Nothing's happened since March, which is so, so weird because I remember we at C- CES and ASUS. They had the ASUS Windows device that had the eight. Mm-hmm. C compute platform. It was the very first eight C before the eight C X. Yeah, and I get it. Initially, that's what Qualcomm wanted to do. They wanted to because that's what Microsoft was wanting the to do. Windows they were wanting on to do the whole Windows on ARM and and lightweight and always connected. But it failed miserably. Then it failed miserably again, and it's like, why is it taking this long? Like, yeah, why are we just not pulling the plug on that? I mean, it's here? clear that Chrome OS was built for this kind of stuff. Like, yeah, I mean, it, it it does so good on ARM. And, and I tried to write the article, too, in a way that's like, I'm not trying to say, like, this is the best thing and who cares about what's here. Like, I'm saying it's it's exciting because of what we have right now. Sure. Like, the ARM space is super interesting right mm-hmm. now. It's only going to get more interesting. There's more of these 7C devices. Again, I, I have a leaning. I can't put it together. I can't put my thumb on it and be like, oh, for sure, this is what this is. But I really feel like there's some things working in the repositories that point to uh, probably that Gen 3 in the works and some of these devices that are still connected to the original seven C board, which was Trogdor. Right. Um, and so like Homestar pulled off of that, which was the basic Snapdragon detachable is a Homestar device. Basically. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Strong bad. Homestar is the, uh, Lenovo Duet five. Um, strong bad was the platform for detaching Snapdragon, but there is, uh, the HP Chromebook X211, which is a Gen 1, that is uh, uh, Homestar. And then there's the the Lenovo, which is also, they're, they're off the same board. And so it's like, wait, they're, they're different chips. Like, I don't understand what's going on. And so somehow, the there, there's a board called Herobrine, and there's a bunch of little forks off of it. I don't know that those are going to become Chromebooks. I don't know if, I have no idea how they do this. I don't know if it's like, hey, here's this platform. And then we do this stuff to tweak it for this other one, and then we just swap the chip out. I, I don't know. It's above above my pay grade. But I have a feeling that there's a couple of them that are probably going to be that Gen 3, uh, which is going to be exciting. I think yeah. it's going to be a, a nice bump. But the the 8CX, um, it'll just be a different level. Uh, I think even then the Companio 1380 that's in the, the uh, Asu, or Acer Spin 513, because and, and that, that device is great. I yeah. really, really, really like that yeah. device. Um, and, and I'm fine with the, the Duet 5 and Duet 3. Sure. The, the Snapdragons and those, too. I mean, more than enough to do what you need a tablet to do from a productivity standpoint. Like, they're, they're in that realm of, like, cool, I'm not too worried about performance. Right. Yes, there's going to be problems here and there. But overall, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Um, the 8CX just goes to – it's going to go to a different level. Like, that's a different – monster um all your best cores go, go in those 8cx chips it's not like you're getting last year's cores or whatever like you're getting the best arm cores possible like this is going to be as good as arm's going to get on anything aside from like a macbook uh, with an m1 or yeah. m2 chip in it um so that's uh, that's exciting to, yeah to think like what what kind of computing power we'll get from that and like the changes today <clears> were <throat> they weren't huge it wasn't like some big massive like oh my god this is going to change the world <laughs> But it was, you know, the addition of some PCIe slots and and paving the way basically for NVMe storage and Which, uh, 5G. And so none of the ARM Chromebooks have right. NVMe. They all have EMMC. Right. Not a huge deal. Like, it's not one of those things like, oh, that's going to change everything. No. Like, but, but it's just nice. Yeah, I mean, you look for that when you're looking for a premium 
laptop now for tablets keep the emmc but people Not make such a deal. big deal about that but no one cares you don't put mbme in a tablet i mean yeah I and it's good but especially emmc has gotten a lot faster too yeah, there's it's some not, specs in the newer emmcs yeah. that are pretty fast um so it's not gonna again it's not gonna like revolutionize your workflow or anything right uh, but it's cool to see because it's one of those things like abe said if if you're looking for a nice chromebook a nice laptop you know having nvme storage in it is is a nice perk and then 5g um you know we still don't have any 5g chromebooks and so it makes a lot of sense. I mean, Qualcomm builds their own right. modems. Yep. Yeah, they're yep. they're kind of forefront in uh, in five G and LTE and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, the the idea of this these devices coming out with eight, the eight CX being a little bit more premium. Um, you know, I, I'm using I'm testing the Dragonfly right now, for instance. I'm imagining that a little bit thinner with no fans, uh, but the same type of stuff, like really nice screen and great keyboard and all that kind of stuff, but just a little slimmer and a little bit more. Yeah. I don't know, tablety like a little yeah. bit more, you know, I don't know, pixel book like. Yeah. Um, yeah. But having a twelve or fourteen hour battery right. and being super fast and not having fans and and being lightweight and so, I think it's going to pave the way for those kind of things. And it's good that they're getting into this. It's probably going to take. I I would imagine looking at the commits right now, unless they can pull a bunch from the Snapdragon platform as a whole from the Seven C, they got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Um, this is not something that's going to show up the end of this year or anything uh, like yeah. a ces announcement would i could see that yeah. hey, but not but not a device or, like hey here's what we're doing in the chrome in os December, space they they do their summit summit yeah. Yeah. i could see their summit can final, we go this year saying, hey, Hawaii, right we have yeah, i've got a contact now yeah that's true hit them up yeah because uh, i could see them actually making a chromebook announcement like yeah. hey we're pushing into chromebooks with the 7c and 8c expect stuff to come in 2023 <laughs> right okay. yeah um, yeah Excuse but me. yeah it's exciting um because i i I love everything MediaTek's doing right now, and I feel like um, the Snapdragon uh, efforts have been like dipping a toe in the water. Like, yeah, okay, okay. and clearly, good. And, and clearly, Qualcomm and, and you know the Snapdragon platform uh, have all of the bits and pieces to really lean into this. Like, it, it, and if they roll out an 8CX, you know, like, Chromebook, it's gonna be great. Yeah, and that's <laughs> the beauty because like you have all the stuff in Chrome OS that's coming, like Snoop detection, and, and uh, yeah. ma maybe they'll do stuff like you know Face Unlock, like Windows Hello, and all that stuff. Qualcomm's chips have all of that already. Yeah, AI, AI computational yeah. stuff, and right. machine learning, it's all there. There's no extra bits and pieces. It's just right. a matter of hey, our chips in here. Tell Chrome West to use our stuff. Yep. You know, so. Like Media Tech's out there doing it, and yep. they're yes, getting they they're getting feedback, they're getting data. You know, yep. they're getting. They're getting some experience here. And, they and their, dimen Qualcomm their dimensity to... chips are no joke. If they start mm -hmm. moving that direction, their well, chips are... Didn't they say at the summit, too, like the 1380, mm -hmm. they said, yeah, that's there, but there's mm -hmm. a flagship yep. processor yes. in the works. Yep. So I will probably see something from them, too, um, I would say, in the next six months, um, because they're, they're probably both going to be coming out with, like, f full flagship caliber, because... You know, in the in the eyes clearly of Acer, they they labeled the five thirteen with a with a five. A five it's yeah. not a seven; mm -hmm. it's a five. Yep. So, uh, even though it's you know borderline like Core i tenth gen Core i three kind of performance, they're not seeing that as flagship. Yeah. Which, you know, I, we could go off on a whole other tangent about some of the ARM stuff that just got announced just this week. Mm -hmm. um, the new cores that they put out, uh, their core, the X three cores, or the new big customizable ones, and then the you know, you normally have Cortex A78, and I think it's the latest one. This one had three digits at the end. I don't, I don't even know what it was. But then they also announced uh, their new uh, integrated GPU as right. well. I don't remember the name of it. It was uh, uh, something like really cool sounding. Yeah, though. it was really cool. Um, oh, and we had a way. Andy Cam. I'm getting, yeah. I'm getting arm, confused with the ARM new GPU. Yeah, I'm getting arm confused with integrated the AMD GPU. when we were talking about earlier. It's start with an M. M I can't remember. I can see the, the thumbnail I was looking at. Mm. Um but they said it's based on the Mali GPU that's already in Tensor, for instance. That's right. the one that they've shipped. Because, like, Snapdragon does Adreno. They do their own GPU with right. ARM. The Mali one is the one that ARM kind of makes. It's, it's the base it's GPU. The, the this is a huge step up. It's built on that architecture, but it's a big step up with all these cores and ray tracing hardware and all this stuff. It's it's wild. Big deal. The Immortalist G. Immortalist. Immortal, yes, yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sounds awesome. Yeah. Immortalist. Immortalist. Um, so, yeah. yeah. So, that, there's all that stuff going on. So, all of those new cores that get made, 
I mean, created and are offered up for you know use in all these different iron chips. You know those things will get pulled into they they Snapdragon name or Snapdragon uh, Qualcomm named the Snapdragon eight CX and seven C the way that they did. It's the same way they did with the the eight Gen one. That way they don't have to keep coming up with some new name. Right. So if it's an eight CX, that it could be whatever generation of eight C X right. chip. It doesn't matter. So. There's a chance they could be waiting and saying, "Hey, we like these new GPUs and these new cores. We're going to pull in some of those." Or Arduino, Arduino, no, it's not Arduino, no, Arduino, Adri- Adreno, sorry. Adreno, Adreno. There you I was go. thinking of, yeah, that's something else. <laughs> Adreno um, <laughs> GPU, and we're going to make you know the latest gen 8CX for Chromebooks. Then they're just laying the foundation for right now to make sure the platform's working, and then they can swap in those those different cores. Um, and likewise, <coughs> you know, MediaTek clearly uses a lot of what ARM produces. So, you know, they've talked about doing NVIDIA GPUs along with the 1380. Mm-hmm. So maybe they're, I, there's a bunch of stuff moving and happening and developing in the ARM space. And the the thing that was interesting with um, these new ARM cores is they were putting them up against some sort of 12th gen Intel. Probably was one of the lower ends. Probably the, one of the famous ones. And it was beating them. I like mean, the, the 12th are, gen, even the fanless ones, like the, they're not Y series anymore, but even those are monsters. So that's yeah. so, I mean, they're, amazing. They're beating in, in certain benchmarks. They're, you know, these new cores from ARM are, are going up against actual flagship Intel chips. And so it's it's an interesting time because, you know, in our minds, if, if we say a flagship Chromebook, it just needs to be good enough. But if they're looking at it going, no, we want flagship like, you're picking Intel or you're picking MediaTek or you're picking Snapdragon. We're not talking about like, oh, it's good for an ARM chip. Like, no, it's it's yeah. there or better. Uh, than, and that's than awesome because in 10 years, we've never looked at ARM and thought, oh, flagship Chromebook. You've never gone no. out to look for a premium Chromebook and even give an ARM a second thought. Yeah. I no. mean, it's just not a thing. And we can argue that the 1380 <clears throat> could be in that realm. Yeah. Um, but to say flagship, especially now with, with 12th gen Intel chips, it's like, eh. Yeah, because, no. I mean, you can argue the other way that there are i3 devices out there that aren't quite what I would call premium. You know, right. like what, what Lenovo's done with the Flex 5. Great device, right? but it's budget-friendly, and it knocks some of the corners off, so you lose a little bit. It's super powerful, but it's not what I would call a flagship. Mm-hmm. Right. Know, so Not anymore. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Uh, it, it'll be interesting to see. You know how all this shakes out over the next few months. Um, I think there's going to be some there's going to be some cool stuff announced between now and I don't know January February between CES and these summits that these <clears throat> companies have and stuff. So what what do you what do you know that you aren't telling? Us? I, it's, that's exactly what I was saying. I was like, Robbie's what got you know? some insight. I don't know news. anything. I, mean, I just have a gut feeling. Hmm? What email did you get? You didn't tell us about? Huh? Good. Huh? <laughs> Nothing. We do. We do. I can't I, say. We get. They told me. It, they take my house. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, we get we get wow. embargoed emails every now and then. I mean, we're Dude. not like some of these big publications that get no. everything, but you know, we we get our fair share of stuff. Dude, so I got so, some, I got some like, stuff we, today. I'm no, excited. Nice. I, we can talk about it though. It's because I'll have it published before this goes out. So those a opens. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was trying to get a picture. There's no pictures. There was no pictures in the press release. They just have that graphic that they made that yeah. have the four devices. Well, uh, I emailed them. They sent me a link to an unlisted video, which I can't share, but it's an unboxing. Yeah. I was like, can I grab a still from this? Because I need a featured image, you know, yeah. whatever. And he said, oh, give me a little bit. Uh, while we were coming back from the pool, I saw the email. He said, you guys are the only ones who have these. These are the high-res marketing nice. photos. So, nice. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it opens new flexible, scalable PC mm-hmm. thingy that works with Chrome OS Flex. We're... we're uh, yeah, we're gonna get one. So is cool. is it? Can you order them with Flex pre-installed? Yes, you can order them with Flex pre-installed, but they have uh, they have TPM 2.0, and they uh, you you once you have it, if you want to change the operating system, you can install Windows or you can install any flavor of Linux you want. So interesting, very flexible. Is this the one that had the kind of cheese grater look on the top? Yeah, the top looked very. <laughs> I like yeah, it. I mean, it looks like a weapon. Yeah, it's kind a, of that's, industrial. It's the heat sink and the heat sink cover because they're designed to be kiosk devices they sure. get mounted on the back of something they had he was showing me the extreme I, I had a chat with some of them yesterday which is a little intimidating because i thought i was just talking to joe there were three guys from and one of them like is was like the cfo or something i'm just like hey what's up hey what's up <laughs> Okay, cool. I'm, I'm Gabe from yeah. Kentucky. <laughs> they have the extreme one, which is designed to withstand 60 degrees below zero, I think. Because these are like a lot of these. One of the things they have, if think if you go to, I 
think it's the Statue of Liberty. There's a kiosk outside the Statue of Liberty that has some interactive stuff, whatever. That's an A-Open device. And that, nice. That's something we've always pointed out. Is you've probably never heard of A-Open. They're owned by Acer, but you've probably used an A-Open device right. or been somewhere. They they have a lot of like point-of-sale devices yeah. and kiosks and yeah. stuff like that. So. Yeah, we uh, we have one. Our ticker in here is yeah. yeah. Eye open. We've got a we've got an interview coming out here soon with uh, with Naveen. I'm, I'm going to forget <coughs> how to say his last name, so I'm not even going to try. Uh, we had a, a really fun chat with uh, Naveen over at Google, who yeah. he's in enterprise and kiosk and signage and stuff, and talking about some of these kind of integrated solutions that they're that they're rolling out for you know even small to medium sized oh, companies. Yeah. Like this isn't exclusive to you know mcdonald's or whatever no because when we first got the mini and the chrome base we got those from google not from a open because mm -hmm, yeah. we had a contact with the enterprise uh department at google and that was one of the th one of the case studies that yeah. they did they have a lot of little mom and pops places yeah. that use these and it it increases foot traffic yeah. it, uh, it increases sales and retention because people can come in and get in and out quick well, they have interact i've been to a furniture store where they had them they had these giant uh displays that had a like a, essentially a chrome box mounted to the back and it's a touch screen display and yeah. you can sit there and look for the furniture that you yeah. want and yeah yeah so. well and especially the one thing uh naveen and i were talking about <clears throat> is you know after uh, after the pandemic it's this contactless uh stuff especially even in in food and oh, yeah. everywhere it's like you're almost it's almost becoming a little bit expected right. that you have some sort of kiosk solution you know when you walk into a business or whatever so chrome os is a perfect fit for that Absolutely. it's easy to deploy it's easy to manage yep you know i mean all of the after we're about getting hacked and security doing crazy stuff. i mean yeah. it's it's all of the reasons we love chrome os it's like oh great it works awesome for this too so yeah and that was cool it was enlightening to talk to them yesterday because this this new one it's called the ace mini and it is it's like it's, it's a, a small, brick. yeah. It's a small. It's 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 not as wide as my phone, but it's a little square. But then they have a mini. Then they're going to have like a a max, and then an extreme. But uh, I can't go into the details on the specs until they until they tell me. But I, you know, I asked them like, when are you going to have one with LTE? And and because of what they do and their focus on the enterprise sector and security and stuff like that, they're like, that's we, you know, we've obviously talked about it, but that customers don't want that. Mm -hmm. They have Ethernet cables and right. all that stuff. They it needs to be secure. But I mean, one of these little little tiny boxes will control two four K televisions or or displays. Like if you have two four K yeah. displays up on the wall, and then the big ones will run. I don't know three or four. They'll run. I mean, eight, they'll run eight K. We don't so. really have a need to have a a, <clears throat> a Chrome box on this, but I think we should do it. Well. Yeah. And then out there, where we have the where the other TV used to be mounted in the yeah. main office, we need to put a TV up there and move our analytics up on that. That'd be yeah. nice, and That'd have it better. with a Chrome box behind it. Let's do that. With okay, break. we're gonna take we're gonna take a break. <laughs> order a TV, go mount it. Uh, <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> get our analytics switched over. Go get one of these new Chrome boxes, and bada bing, bada boom. There you go. Uh, all right, we're gonna take a quick break. We do have some other stuff to cover, so stay tuned. All righty, welcome back, everyone. Uh, let's dig into the Pixel 7 leaks and kind of leak culture. Leaks. Yeah. We've already seen the phone. Yeah. We have images of it. These aren't leaks. No, it's, it's and funny. Are technically leaks. I mean, the, there's a couple of them floating around. They've been bricked by Google. Yeah. Um, and there's a couple of things. I don't, I don't want to act like they've got nothing off of it. Like I saw something the other day about the, the display type. Like it's, a uh, iteration newer than the pixel 6 pro so it's yeah. probably going to look to the exact same to most people yeah um but i mean it confirms that there's 120 hertz but like, yeah they're not going to walk that back so and they're probably not going to be like let's get 144 like, right 120 is fine um to the naked eye there was one other thing that saucy uh, something about, about the brightness or something about it yeah maybe it gets a little bit more peak brightness like yeah. outdoor brightness it, but yeah it was there's one other thing did you have it in your article i was gonna say i've no. pull it up i know i didn't put it in there because i was just like it yeah th these things aren't like that big of a deal like new things that actually yeah if you want to pull it if you want to pull that article up the link i put to uh the actual leak in that that they <coughs> outlined a couple things but honestly i was just kind of like but this isn't the point yeah right? that's not the point i was trying to make right. in the article it was more along the lines of the fact that uh like they did with when they announced tensor in august last year and they were like here here are these yeah. new phones with tensor inside they didn't give us a bunch of details they just here's a basic look at the phone and we're making our own chip talk to you in october um 
So like, oh, before yeah, I go on. Up to upgraded haptic feedback solution as well as a new NFC chip. Yeah. Cool. See? Again. Yeah. Updated haptic. Like, nice. I, okay. Most so people don't care, and nice. almost everyone will not notice. No. I mean, let's not get a different the, the, the haptics. The haptics on that phone are excellent. fantastic. Yeah. They're so excellent in the Pixel 6 yeah. Pro. So I'm like, if you're going to upgrade it, this, great. But if you left it the exact same, no one would That's fine, care. too. Yeah. Yeah. It's fine. Like, that's yeah. not a thing you need to focus on. That's not a thing. Right. And when we start talking about this phone, the Pro, um, and the Pixel 6, too, to that extent, like, what needs to be in you know uh, upgraded like what what is what are people really interested in and so in the, the article i really talked about that stuff so it was like what do people care a lot about well what's the camera going to do that's going to be new what new thing are they going right. to do with the lenses or the machine learning or the algorithms that make the pictures look better well guess what i don't care what leaked version of the phone you've got they're going to they're going to either brick that phone so you can't use it or you're going to be sending out stuff and be like, oh, this is what it's doing. And everybody looks at it and goes, well, that's pre-production hardware, pre-production software. You know, Android 13 isn't even out of its beta yet. Like, so, yeah, you you showed us that, but it's not really indicative right. of what it's going to be like. Right. And that just ends up being the case for almost everything from a software perspective sure. that you want to know from a phone. Well, how's it perform? What d- d- Does it matter? Yeah, right. the, the, it, it could be nerfed. It's not finished. And not only that software gets tweaked along the way i right. mean yeah. as good as totally that, as good it. as the camera is on that phone two months from now it could be better google could yeah. do an update to the camera and and so all it's that. like okay well leaks don't tell you that either right so what are leaks generally there to get across it's the hardware it's like yeah. what does it, what's look, it gonna like? look like how many cameras is it going to have you know the, what's the screen look like what are right. the bezels like is it still got a curved display right. like, but other than that there's not much else like we've just gotten to that point with smartphones that it's kind of like oh it's going to be super nice hardware so, yeah. have you picked up a OnePlus it's lately? It's going to be metal and glass. Have you picked up a Samsung device lately? Have you picked up a Motorola device lately? Have you picked up a yeah? Pick a manufacturer, Huawei, Oppo, Oppo. any of them? Yeah. They, they they all make great phones. Yeah. So yeah. like that's not a big deal either. And so all of a sudden, Google's like, okay, the big thing people want to see is like a CAD render or whatever, and people are getting cases and like this is what it's going to look like. Okay, well sure, here there it is. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Now everybody's wind, just the wind like, is gone from the sails. Yep. Yeah, hey. I mean, and good on them. I mean, I think it's. I mean, you know, it is what it is. So whatever. And so it feels like they they they've just done a good job. I think of deciding to to put that stuff out there. <clears throat> and what I hope is that they'll they'll start taking advantage. Like some of the other companies have started doing this a little bit. Like OnePlus did it with was it the OnePlus Nine maybe I don't know where they were leaking little things out before like in the in the month or so before. They leaked a couple little quick glances of it. Then they leaked some photo samples themselves. They leaked, uh, you know, some of these basic things. Google could absolutely do that. Like, nobody would went into this before Google showed the Pixel 7 and thought, are they really going to make a Pixel 7? Right. Yeah, they're going to make a Pixel 7. They didn't sell very well all the way through 5, and they kept making them. Yes, they're going to make another Pixel this year. So yeah. that's a foregone conclusion. That, that You're not surprising anybody with that. And so they knew that. They went in and showed the phone off how many months? What, <laughs> six months almost? Six early? months, yeah. I mean, because it's not, it wasn't a, a, some mind-blowing revelation for anyone to see this and go, oh, yeah, of course they are. And now it's cool to be like, cool, like it's going to be metal around the, this part. Right. That's a cool upgrade. But overall, we're keeping the aesthetic. We know it's going to feel nice because it's a Google phone, you know, and most people that make nice phones make good feeling phone. Like, that's not surprising. So the rest of the question we have around this phone comes down to software yep. and user experience and how good Tensor 2 is going to be versus Tensor 1. Yeah. And the little bit of stuff that's leaked around Tensor 2 about some of the same cores or some changing is all a big shrug right now because it's not rolled out on completed software yet. So... Even if you could get a benchmark of it right now, I'm not going to read anything into that, nope. especially with custom custom uh, silicon. So it's like there's nothing else to talk about until Google decides they want to talk about it. Yeah, and unless there's some other unknown feature that we're not anticipating or expecting, there there's real. It's just like I'm just I'm ready for the phone. Yeah. I mean, l- let's get let's get to when, yeah. August, when, October, oh, October. Yeah, both. yeah, that and the, like, like uh, the watch, to, even the watch too. It's almost right. like you've shown me enough of the watch. The only thing questionable now is the interface, and mm-hmm. until you're done and ready to show that off, no one's going to have that. So, right. nope. 
yeah. which is why people are already talking about the Pixel Watch 2. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was interesting. <laughs> Did you see it? Yeah. yeah that was great. I mean, I, the Pixel Watch wrong. 2 is going to be amazing. I didn't write it. Wait, what? I, so. <laughs> I hope you're right, but where did that come from? <laughs> but, and I didn't write the article to be like, oh, leakers and leak culture is worse. Like, no. I love a good leak. Absolutely. Like else. Yeah, absolutely. Like, we it's just fun to get hyped about, about something, yeah. The 8CX, it's not out. I mean, it's not a leak, per se, but same kind of idea. So, I mean, I'm not against it at all. Uh, I just, I think Google did the right thing with this and has figured out, you know, we can we can deflate most of this, like 80% of it or whatever. Um, I think other companies should follow suit. Like, Apple, for one, should do the same thing. Yep. Like, do Apple doesn't need the hype of leaks. No. And Google has gotten to a place that they don't. They're doing two separate phone families Robbie's a year. Robbie's phone's like, y you want to talk yeah. to me? It, what? No. You, wanna, you, you, you love me? Hey, Siri. <laughs> Did I get you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, they don't need that. Google's got Google has their main line, and then they have the A series. There's enough hype around it. The sales of the six and the six Pro are through the roof. They don't need leaks for to build hype. And leaks sometimes can be more detriment. I mean, who cares about iPhone leaks? Uh, we've talked about this. Yeah, still, I mean, people still get I views know, and clicks and just, stuff off of it. But I'm like. It, is anyone surprised they're making a new iPhone? No. Like, they, of course they're making a new iPhone. Right. Unless they're coming out with some new hardware thing that they've never done before, that's when people get excited about yeah. stuff. And, and there's just not... New camera setup or a different type of screen, getting rid of whatever. You yeah. know? Now, yeah. granted, it is different with iPhone users because when we've talked about this phenomenon you know, before on this podcast of once you've become an iPhone user that's locked into the idea that I will only use an iPhone and that's the only thing you get this whole idea of like please sir may I have another <laughs> you know? like whatever Apple gives me I'm going to be so happy for and yeah. so you're waiting around to see what little thing and is, it can. Is gonna be the next, the next. And, and I've said this before like I've heard people say like oh we didn't get this this year but we got this as if like you're waiting at some pest dispenser yeah. for you know this corporation to give you a thing and it, whatever that's just that is what it is and yeah. so apple leaks sometimes can cause a little bit more of a stir be a little bit more of a, a clickbaity headline because oh they got rid of the notch right and they made it a hole punch and android users are like yeah so did 50 other companies yeah, and because there's so many other, other phones, options like, for android yeah right and so it's like oh that one <sighs> that one minuscule thing i've been waiting so long and apple's finally giving it to right. me so like that that becomes more leak worthy i think for that audience uh, that, that reminds me i need to ask andrew something uh, <laughs> are voice activated gestures a thing on your phone no they're not it's not gestures? I saw, what does that even mean it's all real voice activated gestures so, what does that even commands mean? or something like you can you can create a custom voice command that will trigger a touch event on the phone what? I'll have to research this yeah, some more, but not that yeah, I know of. Yeah, I saw this, and that like it created that he created a voice command, custom voice command, and then he said, "Hey, whatever, do this," and you see the taps on the screen, right. and I'm like, it might not be real, but that'd be look pretty dope if it is. It'd Android. be cool until it somebody else triggered your phone. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, doo -doo -beep -beep. the, the uh, weird thing was, and I don't, I don't know this if it's. If, even if it is true, I don't know if this is true. What he did was he went through and so he links the command to a combination of touches. Well, he used the combination of his lock screen. So then when his phone was locked, he would say, hey, Siri, unlock my phone and unlock my phone was the voice command. So no. then it would go do 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 do, and it un unlocked the phone hands. Yeah, free. I feel like Apple would never let that Whew. be a thing. But yeah, man, I don't know. That how's that even? Will... The only thing I can think of is if it's like an accessibility where it's you're mapping the buttons. Yeah, and that's then you yeah. yeah. Do I can't imagine it would work from a lock screen. Cut. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I can't see Apple. It Apple that. locks everything I'll look down. That up later, I'm uh, very interested. There's probably an Android app that'll do it though. Oh yeah, like, there's all kinds of yeah. go for it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You can might, do whatever you want. We don't care. It might not be in the Play Store, but there's an <laughs> yeah, app for it. Yeah. <laughs> so, so go, going back to this conversation of, of, of Google putting out this phone and, and kind of squashing leaks and, and kind of the, the hype. And, and, and as Gabe said, some of the kind of negative press that can come from people sharing out oh, stuff yeah. before it's ready and yeah, talking Google, about something. And Google's had their fair share of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... What was that meeting like, I wonder? <laughs> like, that meeting at Google whenever they were like... Let's just uh, 
Let's, let's just, just go him. ahead and tell him. You just want to go ahead and show him, like, I don't know, like six months ahead of time, maybe at I.O. Why not? You just want to go ahead and show him the phone. And they were like, huh, let's, you know, like kind of typical startup thing. They're like, that's not a terrible idea. Let's whiteboard it. You know? yeah. like, <laughs> Pros and cons. Yeah. Here we go. What, what, what's the worst that's going to happen? What's the worst that can happen it? from this? What, are you going to not sell them because you showed it to them? Right. Already? Like, who cares? Right. <laughs> and that's, a, that's a, when you start looking at it from that perspective, like the whole corporate you know like oh, we got to keep this thing under wraps why yeah why yeah. yeah it's it it was it was different in the early days of smartphones like it iteration was happening at such a rapid pace that right. in a year from the time you launched your phone you came up with six new ideas that and, have never been in a smartphone before you, you got to keep that stuff to yourself and you had to keep it keep it locked down right. if not competitors were going to yeah. be seeing it and they're going to grab it, it. Yeah. And they're going to take that and that's your claim to fame maybe that'll make you you know i can see these things right. that motorola was doing when i was working in the smartphone industry it was that way it was cutthroat but everybody still had a chance at that point you know right. like apple hadn't completely taken over samsung was just starting to get and like i was samsung galaxy s2 galaxy s3 yeah. galaxy s4 time is when i was in this and, and so like motorola was still a huge player you had Samsung, you had Google's phones just not coming out, you had iPhones, you had LG doing stuff. Uh, you know, there were all these different phone makers that were all scratching and clawing to try to get that one thing that they could do that would set them apart from everybody else. And so I understand back then that was a big deal. Right. And that's the thing is that Google's now done that. I mean, each phone maker kind of has their thing, you know, sure. and Google, Google has six iterations later not counting nexus they've made a phone that if you go back and look at reviews is arguably one if not the best android phone of the year yeah i, I mean, mean it's always, in the, it's always in the conversation it's always right yeah. there you know there are people that say overall if you take all of these things in consideration price and everything it is the best or one of the best so yeah, i think it's really good marketing on google's part to just put it out there and say hey here it is because now they know they have a device that people want the next iteration right and it's not like oh we told them we we're making a pixel 7 no one's going to buy the pixel 6 now no everybody knew you were making a 7 you put out a new phone every year for seven years now coming up on seven years in october like it's not a it's not a shock to anyone yeah, so yeah that, and that, the 5a or 4 which are whatever the a series has proven that the people that buy the they're it's two different markets yeah i, I mean they are not you know my mother-in-law god bless her has still not bought a new phone but she said tomorrow she's gonna go buy the what's samsung's new a53 is that their new yeah, mid-range yeah. she likes samsung's that yeah she loves samsung's oh, okay. That's what she's going to buy. I was like, tell her to wait for the 6A. Yeah, that that I've, I've tried. I mean, I've tried to give her my OnePlus, everything. But I'm like, that's what she wants. She wants a $500 name brand phone. And yeah. that's the people that are going to buy the A-series Pixel. And then I want a Pixel. I we're yeah. going to buy the Pros. And, the, and there, there'll be a whole separate group of people that waited around and said, okay, the 6, the six Series has, they've gotten rid of all the bugs. Yeah. So I'm going to jump in on that now at some crazy discount that happens Black Friday or whatever there's those people too and then there's the people that are like i want the latest greatest i'll take the bugs and deal with them along the yeah. way and you know and that's what this feels like it feels like a car maker that's been in the business they've they've been in the business for a few years now they've made some really not good cars they've made some okay cars and then they've kind of figured it all out and then they produce their first flagship car right but you don't buy the car the, the first, first year, year it comes out not a new yeah, iteration I mean, and clearly this is it's like it is that way it's this like yeah because i mean they've said they're it, gonna that, stick with this for this a is while. the first true google phone the seven should be it's just gonna be a, a polished, version, be a polished of this. version yeah uh, yeah luckily this isn't a turd and what they've be. tried <laughs> to do, yeah what they've tried to do with marketing in the past has failed miserably so i feel like what they're doing now is really really good that what whole is, hype they did before the event we went to was <sighs> the three just, Oh, it was so bad. Oof. So hurt, bad. hurt me. Face palm. The yeah. best thing about that hurt trip was bad. that uh, Call of Duty Mobile came out while we were <laughs> yep. in the hotel. I remember that. <laughs> yep. I remember that. The rest and, of it was hot garbage. Uh, and Pixel we, Buds. And Pixel Buds. And Pixel Book Go was Pixel announced Pixel Book there. Go? No, wait. That's no, no. Four. Slate. That's a four. Because the slate, slate came up out of yes. the ground yeah. behind us. Oh, shoot. Yeah. yeah. Turd. But that was when he tweeted the night before, you have no idea. Like, yeah. Yeah. You think you know. That was, that yeah, was you the, think uh, you know. That was the rise of John Prosser. That also. Was. That's true. That was. Yeah, yeah front page tech. We, was that. that when we discovered Fluffies? Was that that trip? I don't remember. Mm, uh, no, Fluffies. No. You all just mean you went That to, was Samsung. Samsung. You discovered Samsung. it. We went yeah. back to Fluffies that time. That was also yeah. a bit that was, of a turd hardware, but yeah. a cool trip. Yeah, it was. <laughs> 
we uh, that was when we did our pizza crawl. We started. Yeah. I think Fluffy's was what got us that going. Was the beginning. We yeah. got some Fluffy's. We, we were we like, went "Oh, to, let's uh, go." We went up to Times Square and went to uh, Madame Tussauds. They had the uh, VR ghost. Yes, thing. which was oh, amazing. Yeah. That was wild. That was so much fun. Yeah, which uh, not the side rail, but imagine you know, like the Quest VR. So it was com- it was wire free basically. Like you had to put on like this big pack on your right. shoulder. The rumble, the rumble pack. Yeah, but uh, clearly that's what was running all of it. This is prior to Quest being like. Because I feel like Quest is even better than what that was, and this was this whole harness thing. But it was you could walk around, so you didn't you weren't tethered to anything, and you had your gun, you know, that was hooked to it. But the whole experience is in VR. Like you literally walk through space in VR. You never took the thing off, and you walk through multiple rooms yeah. because they had mapped it to the physical they had room. Smells and doors, and doors and, and wind. wind, water and and, and items. So like if, there, if you saw a table, so awesome. you reached out in VR and you had your gun. That's how it yeah. kind of could tell where your hands were. Do, what? Were there gloves or something on your wrist? Think there was something so. I don't remember. in VR, dude. I'm that telling you, horrible. No, it was amazing because <laughs> yeah. when we when we battled the marshmallow, yeah, you it smelled, smelled like marshmallow. roasted marshmallows. Yeah. But like the the thing that <laughs> it was so cool, dude. The thing that seated it so much in reality was the fact that they had like matched just enough pieces of furniture yeah. that you'd reach out in VR and you would touch the thing. It was like ah! that's. That yeah. set Wait. me into the thing, and I remember, like before we had to battle the monster. Remember, we went outside on the railing, yep. and you're, and you're oh, standing and on scaffolding, and they had you standing on, and it like rumbles a, a little bit, shakes a little yeah. bit, and, and you're like, oh! wind blowing, and you look down, you know, 40, yeah. 50 stories, yeah, grab the rail that you see in VR, but it's actually there in real life. I mean, granted, you're probably on the ground. Oh yeah, you uh, are. But oh yeah, I, I would love to it see the behind matter. the scenes oh, videos. My God. Of this. I, I felt like, oh my gosh, yeah, dude. Like I was, I, I don't like heights, and it was, it yeah. got me. I was like. It's not real. Well, it's not real. It's not I, real. Like, I, re- mm-hmm. I remember, I remember us going into it, and I was a little concerned about getting nauseous because I, yeah. I get motion sickness. I did not at all with this yeah, you because you because could, there's no reference brain, of the outside world. Yeah, my you brain it, could yeah. feel where I was, and like I could see my hands in front of me and stuff and um it was awesome there's that one in vegas do you remember that it's over there by yard house i think it's the same people it's the same it's like a horror movie or something like that no no that's not i'm sorry the there's something out near vegas or somewhere that and it may be closed now the company that did the the, was gonna do like a a park yeah that's right as a group of these so the whole park was you you went into multiple of these experiences i don't think they made it now this one was just a store on that strip right there by (laughs) by the lake but but you can stand outside and watch the video of them all you see is them in a green screen but they're in there like losing their minds you would think that that would take off now because now that you have like these like the quest 2 it's so good and it's wireless. I mean, you get a a version of that with a bigger battery or what I mean, honestly our quest lasts for hours. So as long as you have enough to enough of them keep them on charge. Them slap that on somebody's head, do the same thing. You put them in a room where it's mapped to the, the stuff yeah. in the room, like Seems like that would be a very yeah. easy thing to I do. I wonder now. what happened to that. We need to look that up and see if that so amusement. Here, here's park the thing. thing. Can you yeah. project the VR park? real world things into VR? So like like my mind immediately went to like VR laser tag, but the suits and the stuff that people are wearing is then tied to the software. So you don't actually see the person in front of you, but you because they have the suit on. Could sure. that would we, be dope? Yeah. Could we not see each other or at least like an outline of we can other see people? Each other. Yeah. So like yeah, they were already doing uh, that with the thing yeah, we I did. Could look over and see right. Though. Or yeah. else we would run into each other. Right, yeah. So so you could, you, like, you see him, see him. It wasn't I mean, like, he was a character. Yeah, it's like oh, a little character. An outlaw. Yeah, yeah, it's I could between remember. the vest and the thing on your hands, it was enough to create a, yeah. a person oh, over there. Okay. Yeah, because if not, you'd be running into people the whole yeah. time. Yeah, Because yeah. you so, could yeah. go in with like, groups of I think they already five. have VR. I think they have laser tag stuff. Yeah, probably. Sure. Yeah, yeah they could. that would be amazing. And then like waiting for AR to just get somewhere to where, like, putting the little glasses on and, like, well, Put, you know, stuff's coming out of the walls and stuff. You know, like that. I'm shooting. Like I, that. I mean, I was the, waiting like for fa- that future. Like Father yeah, like I.O. Just, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Just well, the 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 stuff that they're doing with with Google Glass or whatever this new version will be called. Oh, I yeah. feel like they have to like start there and get yeah. that dialed first, and then hopefully we'll see these other applications. Uh, I mean, obviously, Google is or Apple is significantly invested trying, in this yeah. and, and, and trying Microsoft to figure did, it out. Microsoft did a lot with the Hololens stuff, mm-hmm. but I mean, it was this goofy looking helmet yeah. you had to put on. And yeah. who's the other one? Uh, the uh, the the viewport was actually only like this. There was one too. we saw at HTC. Yeah, I was going to say the Vive, mm-hmm. but that's a uh, that's VR. That was all VR stuff. Oh, but yeah, they, there was there was somebody at 
CES one year that had some glasses that I remember we uh, went and in, saw. In something, shoot, they were red. Yeah. Uh, and they hooked USB-C into your phone. Yep. They still make them. They have okay. a new version uh, that are even better now. Um, and I think eventually the advent of, you know, millimeter wave giving you a, a, an easy way to wirelessly talk to stuff right. around you right. uh, once they start leveraging it that way. That'll be something where they can, you know, have some glasses that are on. They have battery in them for the display part, but everything else is running through right. some other thing that's in your pocket. Right. And it just is a matter then, of now developers going, okay, cool, I can write for this platform. Yeah. And we can now project things onto the real world. Right. It It's coming. And then, it's and then also like being able to thought. quickly look over at you know, your, all of your connected devices in your house and get information from them because they're all talking to each other. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how we got here, but, uh, 6A. Yeah. Let's talk about 6A in, in Buds. talking about Google, New York. Pixel Buds Pro. Fluffies. Yeah. Boom. I got us there. When is the, um, when is, what, uh, what's the official release date for 6A in 21 days for pre-order. Yeah. July 21st. 28 days for release. Okay. So my guess is probably the way these things tend to work. If you order on the 21st and you, you get them and they don't go out of stock or whatever, you'll probably get them a day or two before the 28th. Sure. Yeah. Um, and then you'll be able to walk into T-Mobile or wherever on the 28th and get the one that they have in stock. Yeah. And, and I don't think it's, uh, you know, we'll be under a embargo for our the way we review, like the stuff that we have to say about mm-hmm. them. Uh, but we do have a, a 6A and, and some Pixel Buds Pro on the way for us to pre-embargo look at yeah. obviously we won't be able to share anything until uh those dates those embargo dates lift and so yeah uh, but yeah looking super forward uh, to to getting hands on these yeah, things the 6a I, the, intrigues me too 6a is very interesting and pixel buds pro or, the pixel buds pro I, I am yeah so hyped about I, I might be now that i'm thinking about it like i might be as excited about the the pixel buds pro as i am of anything else google has to put out like yeah Pixel the watch. watch. It's gonna be the cool. watch is gonna I, be cool. I, I really yeah. am excited about it, but I'm also I, there's only gonna be a few things that, that it's going to like enhance. You're my, not a you're not a big watch, not a watch guy. guy. Yeah. Like the idea of having it on the golf course is interesting to me. Um, <coughs> that's about it. Yeah, you know, like I, my Fitbit really does most of what I need it to. Did do. they? Say, I can't remember. Did they say is it water resistant? I hope. Gosh, so. surely. I, I hope so. that would be a Don't fail. Call me surely. Uh-huh. Uh, sure. I just it got me thinking. Like I, my daughter, I went swimming earlier with the kids, and she's like, "Dad, you're wearing your watch." I'm like, "I know," and it's awesome because it tells me, "Hey, it it knows I'm swimming." Oh it's yeah. Like, hey, you're swimming, and it tells me how long. I, you know, it tracks all your workout stuff. I'm like, man, if I can't wear it in the water, that's yeah, I surely. S- gosh, don't Dad's think it's got a water resistant rating of 50 meters. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I ain't going 50 meters in, under any water unless um, what is that? Five atmospheres. Trouble. So that's about standard. Yeah. Is that right? 10, me- I have ten meters no is the atmosphere. I don't know. I'm sure. Old You're thing. wearing a dive watch. Sounds sounds about right. He's like, uh huh, watch this. Mm-hmm. Beep, beep, beep. Yep. How and I definitely go diving all meters. of the time in this. He's a scuba he's a scuba bro. It's one I cannot scuba. actually go <laughs> scuba diving because it's I have a heart murmur. Three, so three I'm never gonna put okay. this to so use. It's about five atmospheres. I can there. go I can go snorkeling. I just can't go I can't go scuba diving. No scuba. Why? No. I have you a heart not, murmur. You are not for uh, scuba? Are you guys for scuba? I have a heart murmur. So I, you can, like, you just, yeah, just, they recommend against it. Yeah, it's not not advised. Luban. Luban, you are not for scuba? <laughs> Luban. That's great. <laughs> I love that. My name's Ruben. Uh, so. <laughs> well, I got to give Andy Super something st- to attach to. For yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. yeah I, uh, <laughs> so I have some is, Easter egg to throw The watch is like, here. hey, the watch will be cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I think it's going to be great. Don't get me wrong. And the seven, again, great. But as we this has to, out, this has like, the this potential. Be a huge upgrade over this, yeah, honestly. The Pixel Buds Pro have the potential to be the best product Google has produced in a long time because their previous devices, earbuds, were all kind of swinging a miss. Well, you know, my, my uh, AirPods Pro ran out of battery today because they're lightning and I don't have anything lightning so I have yeah. to I've got a little charger plugged in in the corner by the tree so I'm plug in Robbie's the charging tree of life, station as he calls it. <laughs> the tree of life Robbie's charging station in the corner <laughs> I didn't know what he light. was doing when he went over there one day I was like what are you we don't okay. have a ton of outlets in our in our office no so, we so no. We've, we've taken up the two by our desk and so I'd have to hook up something under my desk and I like a clean desktop so I don't really want to do that I could charge them off of my 
whatever. I, I plugged it in one time over there, and I'm like, nah, that's fine. Kinda works. I don't have to. I don't charge them that often, so it's yeah. every once in a while. Check they, them in they're there. wireless charge, right? Yeah. So I could get. I need to get a wireless charging pad, but honestly, I'm going to wait until I go. I want to find something that works get for Pixel. All, all your buds, Pixel the stuff, watch. Yeah. I want to have a little tree of charging you know i have it on my desk oh, but I didn't even think yeah about i'm still that. looking for the air power from apple <laughs> it'll be out soon <laughs> it's coming, coming soon, soon. Coming soon, coming, soon. Uh, coming soon like i don't think google will make it um no they have that one on their site is it, it iati i think so it has the Pixel. thing for the phone and then the pad, pad for stuff. your earbuds so or whatever pad, and then usually they have a hanger thing that that'll work right. the watch. so hopefully iati because they're an official partner hopefully they'll make a new one for them and they make quality well. stuff so that because yeah. that's the only thing that this i've noticed I, I usually charge the samsung watch with my um what is it what's the clock smart clock lenovo, uh, lenovo. lenovo. so yeah. i have the smart lenovo smart clock with the wireless uh, charging yeah, yeah. pad so I charge my phone and then I plug my charger for my watch in the USB port. It doesn't put out quite enough juice to charge both at the same time. Uh. So if my watch is charging and I set my phone down, uh. my watch then sits oh. there and goes charging, charging. Yeah. Just so yeah. And that's one th- yeah. another thing I love about the Fitbit. Like we've got one charger mm-hmm. plugged in in our room. It lasts for five or six days for me. Yeah. Um. So once a week usually, I'll plug it in while I go take a shower and it's full. Yeah, I mean it charges super fast and yeah. it lasts forever. So I'm like, again, there's there's reasons I'm like, um, I'm looking forward to this, but I also I don't. It's not gonna like change my life or anything. Phones, nice upgrade, but I had to use the the uh, Pixel Buds A series today uh, when we played our Apex Legends round, and you know the lag's still there. Um, I can get over that for a short period of time, but like the sound quality. Oh yeah. When I put them in and it loaded into the game, I was like, oh my! Yeah, I forgot how amazing. good these things sound. Yeah. Like they they sound way better than the AirPods Pro. They just you, sound you better. They the don't OGs. have A and C though. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but the connectivity is great. Like, and it's I've used FastPair on it with my phone. So even though I'd forgotten them because I was testing something out, you know, I flipped my phone open. Whoop, I opened it up it and it said. Hey, a, a previous uh, thing you've paired is available. You want to connect? Clicked it, connected, boom, up so and running. Awesome. You know, drop the dropped them in. They sound great. The connectivity is good. Wearing them is super comfortable. So I'm like, it's like the the original Pixel Buds, the wired ones were weird and clunky and silly, uh, but they brought like the gesture, some gesture stuff and some mm-hmm. smarts. And the Pixel Buds came out, the wireless ones, the fully wireless ones, and we were super hyped about them, and they were big letdown but they were great the sound was great yeah the gestures were great the case was really good and it's like they didn't quite get it all put together it's almost like they quietly put the a series out and even though they took away some of the things in order to get the price down or to i think they just did it because they had to differentiate the yeah. two um they fixed all like the, those underlying things like the yeah. a series are great earbuds yeah, if they were um, 60 bucks i would anyone who was looking for a cheaper set of headphones i'd go buy those they're great they're still, still a hundred dollars like, aren't they because the because the thin thing like getting it seated right because there's not a whole lot to grab onto I do yeah. like that about the AirPods yeah. I got a stick I can just wrench it in my ear so you won't get that with these obviously either with the the Pro yeah but I found this design though like that looks more like what most earbuds yeah. that are super comfortable like my, sound my wife has those kind of yeah my wife has those Raycons which she lost she found it by the way it was in the washing machine for the second time and it still works perfectly hey. so wow shout out to Raycon you can get them for like fifty bucks but she wanted me to listen to something yesterday and I've never worn them so she handed me one of her earbuds and I went to put it in and they're designed like that and my one more and everything Drop as it. you slide it into your ear canal it just forces itself into your yeah, ear it and it sits fits. in that little spot. And i was like these are super comfortable yeah because yeah, so, yeah. uh some of like some of the samsung's i've tried have been that way mm-hmm. um but then like i have a pair of sound peats they're still like kind of that big white blobby looking thing yep. but they're really comfortable um and that's exactly what these are going to be and so i feel like there's enough to hang on to it's not right. just the disc part so there'll be mm-hmm. enough to hang on to there but the rest of the package if they're I'm trying not to just like overhype all this, but I just feel like with this iteration of these, they've they solved all the stuff that made the original Pixel Buds, the wireless Pixel Buds, so frustrating. Yeah, they've already solved that with the A series, and so now they just solve like some of the outside pieces yeah. and add noise cancellation noise and, and hopefully lag free. Yeah, God. if they're not, uh, <laughs> yeah, we need to write a letter because there's not really any excuse for them to not be lag free. I- we just, I think we no. can just. Put, I play I think with we, the same I think twenty-five we can just put dollar set of headphones every yeah. every day. Yeah, I mean, we should mail a letter, but we could also just like write an article on the site that 
that would probably get it out there. I thought pretty that good. that would have done it for the original <sighs> wireless no. pixel buds. I like letters too. <laughs> Handwritten. Handwritten just goes a step farther. The you know? wired pixel buds, they had lag. And there was an update that Google issued and, to reduce yeah, the lag. Yeah, because so, we bought, we ordered a set yeah. just to try yeah, it out. And I was like, that, nope, no lag. Perfect. Yeah. Um, and, and we so, we kept waiting for that to happen with the uh, Of course, I, I looked at those, the, and I'm like, they had so many problems with them. They, they probably, probably just like, didn't even want to. That's the last of our concern right yeah, now, yeah. guys. Like, we've got to get this part figured <laughs> we out. we got to make sure they stay connected. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about the audio. Like, we had the original Pixel Bud wireless ones at home, but one of them stopped charging, and I cleaned them. I did everything. I reset them and all that. They, it, the left one would not charge, so mm-hmm. it was dead in the water. Yeah. The other day, I found them on the counter, and I was like, well, I'm going to try them one more time. I'll charge them, try them one more time. If not, they're going in the trash as much as I hate to throw them away. I mean, they're, what were they, $170? Yeah. Much as I hate to throw them away, they're not doing any good, you know. <laughs> Can't sell them. Yep. Can't, yeah. Put them back in. Obviously, the left one didn't work, but listening to the audio on the right one, man, man, these yeah. are really, really yeah. good. <laughs> they have good drivers in them. So yeah. I'm like, you mix that with, you know, I, I don't want to go too far, but I, I would assume Google has <clears throat> put together enough algorithms and machine learning stuff that their noise canceling is probably going to be really nice. Yeah, because they're doing uh, the whole thing where they, you know, cancel out any gap that's coming in between yeah, your so ear. And they're doing all kinds of stuff. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking. Very, very forward. Please uh, don't these. let us down. Yeah, yeah. Just, just, just don't let yeah. It's a, the only thing I worry about is like, yes, there is a lot of tech there happening, and like, is that tech going to get in game the way mode, of, man? Yeah, that, yeah. With that, yeah, have a have a dedicated mode where I'm like, I turn some of this stuff yeah. off so that I can have right. latency free, or yeah. just don't make it have latency because the AirPods Pro, again, when I say no latency, like no Bluetooth headphone is completely without latency. There's always going to be a little bit, but. All of the ones, latency, all the ones uh, that have yeah. it down to a workable amount, have it down to the same workable amount. You try one, try another one, try another one. It's like you get the same thing as when you hit an action on the screen to work before you hear it. I mean, it's usually like, but up, but up, but up, like that. Yeah, I think so, you're like two to three milliseconds is where your once, brain stops discerning the I, difference. I've, so, I've yeah. been using your original AirPods, AirPods and so you can't. It, once I start playing, I do not notice. No. My brain is like, oh yeah, this is yeah. fine. Because I, you know, I think oh, it's uh, Josh. You know, one time I let him borrow, and I was like, you know, what'd you think? And he was like, ah, there's still some. So he still wire. He still uses wire. Yes, it's going to be a little bit of yeah. lag. It's not lag free. It's just the a reasonable amount of lag in gaming. And I'll be honest, today, I I didn't. I'm I, it's, I'm sitting here thinking like I need to go plug them back in and check again. Like I played with the the uh, A series. I don't recall there being lag, but. I may have just not been paying attention. I don't mm-hmm. know. So I don't want to act like it's not that big of a deal because the minute you it notice was it, very, it was like a full if they, uh, if they update the A's, that would be, and then I mark the retail price down to like 69 bucks, they would they'd be yeah, good That'd sellers. be a great set of headphones. But I, I did not, I'm telling you, I didn't yeah. notice it. But again, sometimes that's one of those things that like until you, you, you notice it, you're like, oh, Right, because no. your brain will, it, it's like your nose. You don't see, your your brain sees your, your eyes see your nose, but your brain forgets it's there. It just ignores it. Uh, Once, it's true. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, Good now luck. you see your nose. Yeah. Sorry. So, but it's like, if you have bu- uh, earbuds that, the latency is minor your brain will delete that and yeah it could just get around it. yeah it starts to understand well you know i'm hitting it and no, i'm curious yeah so i haven't yeah, i don't know that I've, in and try. i haven't messed around with my original where's your nose uh, <laughs> uh another fun thing is the fact that in oh, the back no. of your eyeball where all your nerves come together you have a blind spot a literal blind spot yep. that you can't see right out in front of you with both eyes and your brain just fills it in for you oh do you all know, the time you know what the other one i saw yesterday Sweet. was <laughs> do you know that in a mirror your reflection never changes sizes dude held held up his cell phone he's recording he took like a piece of chalk or crayon and he drew a square around his cell phone as he walks away backs away the phone is still fits right in the center of that square what yeah so we got to try that because it blew my what? mind yeah. That makes zero sense. I know, but we got to try it because I saw it. It's got to be reels on the internet. Gabe, Gabe, you've been watching <laughs> some weird reels, man. It's a short form it's video. A, uh-huh. it's got him, man. Got him. Well, now, there's, a, there's, there's a test, though, that thing I was just saying that you can, it's very simple. Like, I can't remember how you do it, but you put dots or yes. something. Yeah. Yeah. And when you cover them, you yeah. realize, like, I literally, oh. I can't see that yeah. anymore. I can't, but my brain is still filling in the paper and whatever it's on and just 
fills in the gap. So you're constantly having two blobs on your in your vision that and your yet, brain just you know and yet we figures can, it out. And yet we can you know swing a, a baseball bat or a softball bat and hit a little tiny ball that's flying at us. Yeah, it's amazing. Our brains are weird. Yeah, super weird. So weird. This is our. This is going to be our other podcast where we just talk <laughs> about weird, really weird stuff. <laughs> what do you got, Andy Cam? Yeah, Come on, new podcast got... called Weird and Deep. <laughs> I, I don't have anything. So yeah, I got nothing. I'll let you down. <laughs> Get out of here, Andy Cam. You got to have something about uh, your your being your, you know, being a ginger. About the there's some the there's some there's some interesting facts you know, about that. Your entire life, you'll never actually see yourself. You only see reflections and pictures of yourself. I yeah. did know that. That's, yeah. There you go. That's I heavy. See, that's deep. This. Yeah, it's I not weird. It's car. deep. Yeah. yeah. It's there you weird. go. That's, it used like to be that. weird, deep, dude. You've told me so many times it's not weird. <laughs> oh, I have normalized. All right, all right. <laughs> it's <laughs> not normalized come up and with... weird and normalized and deep. It's weird and deep. Yeah, it's be weird. And weird and deep. Um, we could let him right. tell other people about the car accident. And yes, still exactly. be weird. Yeah, exactly. That's what we'll do for them. Uh, we you got to come up with something that we're going to start this new podcast. We got we got a lot of extra content we're going to try new to podcast, figure out. Podcast golf channel smoke inside. We we. Some days feel like we're barely keeping our head above water with Chrome Unbox, but we're going to figure out some other stuff, too. <laughs> hey, we didn't get here without dreaming big. Baby. That's right. That's right. That's right. All right. That's it for this week, folks. We appreciate you all tuning in and listening and watching. If you are watching, make sure to give us a thumbs up if you like this. Click subscribe and click the little notification bell. Helps with the algorithm. <laughs> Leave us a comment, too. What was your favorite Easter egg that Andy Cam added into this put him on the hook you gotta put some in there can you i just say one. that everywhere we go my son says he doesn't say he sings mcträger <laughs> he thinks it's the uh, coolest thing and now he's gotten into going mcträger jr and i'm like <laughs> that's <"Yes."> funny <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny i shared the uh i shared the uh the star wars disc golf animation uh, on my on my Instagram, yes, and people have loved so that. Good. My favorite part is that you put my face on the disc. Yes. <laughs> that's my favorite part. <laughs> it's fantastic. Okay, that's it. We'll catch you all next week. See you.